It's not as if she were a, a maniac, a raving thing. She just goes a little mad sometimes. We all go a little mad sometimes. Hello, and welcome back to It's Just Awesome.com's 31 Days of Horror, Part 4. We're reviewing a few of each decade's horror films to enhance your knowledge of horror cinema history. Still recovering from the Great Depression, American audiences in the 1930s were looking for an escape, and horror films obliged them by becoming more and more fantastical, showcasing worlds quite different from the harsh reality of the time. And in fact, they were often not set during the present time at all. And all of this was especially true for Universal's monster movies, and perhaps made them some of the most successful movies of all time. Characters like Dracula, Frankenstein, The Mummy, and The Invisible Man all transcended pop culture to become part of the zeitgeist, and this is arguably due to their cinematic representations in these early horror films. And then with the advent of sound in movies, filmmakers had to adopt new techniques as they transitioned from the silent films of the 1920s. Horror movies in particular changed dramatically. Sound could now be used to terrifying effect, and all the groans, moans, and eerie noises from cinema's early monsters would become as iconic as their makeup and costumes. And this is all not to even mention the actors whose voices became synonymous with their timeless characters. When you think of Dracula, do you hear anyone's voice but that of Bela Lugosi? I am Dracula. His accent has become inseparable from the role. For this year's edition of 31 Days of Horror, our movie selections from the 1930s are Island of Lost Souls, starring Bela Lugosi, The Black Cat, starring both Mr. Lugosi and Boris Karloff, and Werewolf of London, which is actually Universal's first werewolf movie. So be sure to check out those reviews on itsjustawesome.com, where you can also find the entire 31 Days of Horror list, so you can follow along with us each night in October. See you soon!